How lucky are we? We got an empty seat. We made it. It was a little bit of a tricky thing. We found our car. I don't know what kind of make it is. I like it. Oh no, I can't figure it out. How do I get caught? Let me drive. This is our place in Porto. A little bathroom in here. Little kitchenette, Dante. <laughs> Delirious. A little sitting area. Is you just come out here, open the door, and you're right out on the street. Ah! And you can look down. Oh. Bedroom. Huge mirror. Don't even look in it right now. I'm not sleeping for 24 hours, showering or whatever. Another balcony. And Dante. <laughs> Just a quick trip. When we first get to wherever we're going is the supermarket. We love going to the supermarket. <laughs> We headed out for sunrise to the Riviera District. It is one of Porto's oldest, most picturesque neighborhoods, and it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It dates back to medieval times. I recommend coming early to see it and then coming back again as it comes alive with many shops, restaurants, and great street performers. well rested. He slept pretty good last night. Two cruise ships passing each other. This is for my mom because she should be going on those Viking ships. My mom and my dad. There's another one on the other side. Off to explore some more of the city. We didn't get too much of a sunrise. A little disappointed, but how can you be completely disappointed when you have a view? We continued our morning wandering around the narrow streets enjoying the colorful buildings while most of the city was still sleeping.
loving some of the street art. Got our first pasta donata from this place right here. Get a glimpse into Porter's religious history as well as admire the artistry and craftsmanship of Agriado do Carmo known for its traditional Portuguese blue tiles which depict various religious scenes. It was built in the 18th century, but has underwent renovations and additions over the years. The church is known for its twin bell towers, adorned with decorative elements that are visible from various parts of the city. Climb that church tower. I don't think Dante wants to. I want to. Hey Dante, how do you think you feel about climbing that tower right now? You feeling it? Are we gonna do it though? I don't know. I think he's sweating. The Claragos Tower, completed in 1763, is a Baroque masterpiece designed by Italian architect Nicola Nassoni. It's the tallest bell tower in Portugal, a symbol of Porto. You do have to pay a small fee to tour the inside which is incredible and very ornate. There's some steep stairs. staircase to the top involves approximately 200 steps leading to an observation deck that provides breathtaking views of Porto's historic center, the Dura River, and beyond. Midday when we visited and crowded, I think this might be a good spot to go to first thing early in the morning.
San Bento Station. It was inaugurated in 1916, and it's right in the city center of Porto. It took 11 years to complete the intricate design that tells stories of Portugal's past. It's a pure gem and a must see. I was captivated by the fine details and pure talent of the artists. What an incredible way to start a journey. Don't trip, Dante. There's some steep steps. After leaving the train station, heading back towards the Riviera district, we came across more street art and another spectacular blue tiled church. My favorite part of Porto was here, just imagining what life must have been like in the Middle Ages. Having a quick bite to eat, and this is our view. Lots of people. <laughs> The Dom Luis the First Bridge in Porto is an iconic double decker iron bridge that spans the Douro River. It was completed in 1886 and designed by the former business partner of Gustav Eiffel, the architect of the Eiffel Tower. The bridge connects Porto to Villanova de Gaia. The upper deck is used by pedestrians and trams, while the lower deck is used for road traffic. You can also walk there as well. It's about 148 feet above the Douro River, and the views are incredible on both sides. I didn't think that. Oh, I guess we walking back. This massive rabbit sculpture 
made from recycled materials and trash collected from the city was brought to life by Portuguese artist Bordello II. It serves as a subtle yet scathing critique of society's wastefulness. It's hoped to increase social awareness and ecological sustainability. Villanova de Gaia, or simply Gaia, is across the Douro River from Porto. It's the hub for the port wine industry, but full of its own charm. Regimento de Articulera No. 5, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but was a great viewing point for sunset. Here you can take in the views of the city and the Dom Luis the First Bridge. I just had to check out what is supposed to be the fanciest McDonald's in the world. I was shocked to see how busy it was. And no, we did not eat here. I wish I remembered the name of this restaurant. They had the best sangria here. Porto at night comes alive with its many outdoor cafes, bars, and amazing street performers. It was just magical. gelato or an ice cream which was well deserved after the many miles we walked.